Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social in association with William Hill and Empire Fight Store. Always a pleasure, Mr. Shane Watson. You're very jet lagged. You came back from Vegas last night. You're representing your man Sol Dakers this weekend on the Next Gen Show. Firstly, mate, how's things? Good, apart from the fact that my heart is pumping at an, an alarming rate after having about five monsters today to keep me awake. But uh, I think we'll manage fine. I don't think the GP would advise that, but you're here anyway. You're still representing your boy. You're doing interviews. Um, away from that, camp life in Vegas, everything fun? Yeah, really good, man. Really good. Uh, an amazing training camp in Las Vegas so far. Obviously, I've left it a little bit, um, with a little bit left over there, but uh, really, really good, really positive so far. Um, Joe's looking exceptional so far, taking on the game plan well. It's almost like he's not even boxing a Southpaw anymore. Like that's, that's how well he's been performing and sparring. Like that Southpaw myth about him has been absolutely put to bed in this camp. Um, and he's looking great and I'm so excited for September 23rd. I'm obviously still a bit nervous because he is fighting an elite Southpaw in Zhang who everyone in boxing, maybe even a little bit myself, um, overlooked and didn't give him enough credit. And uh, what a fight we have on September 23rd. It's actually two very good fighters who are heavyweights that actually want to fight each other. So that's quite refreshing. It is refreshing. Look, let's go into all the ifs and buts and maybes and whatever. There was a lot of criticism on uh, Salas post-fight, but yourself, I've spoke to Adam, you believe that he's one of the best trainers in the world. No reason to change it up this time. Why is that? Well, Salas knows Joe better than Joe knows himself at the end of the day. Joe is, and Salas have built an, an incredible relationship um, over many years. I mean, nobody is calling for Salas to get sacked when... Joe um, beat Dubois when Joe beat, uh, when Joe smashed the other Joe, Joseph Parker, and and uh, and that, and well, to be fair, Steve did the Takam camp, so I can't give that fight uh, credit to Salas because Steve Bourne deserves credit for that fight. But um, but the many other very good wins uh, Joe Joyce has had in his career as well, and the other titles and that he's won. So you know, when it doesn't go right, you can't just look at one person and put the blame on them. There are many reasons why that that fight didn't go the way, way it maybe should have or the way that we wanted it to. And it's not just Salas. I mean, Salas has admitted to us in private the mistakes that he made. And I've mis uh, admitted the mistakes I made in private as well. And Joe's admitted the mistakes he made in private. So collectively as a team, we sat, uh, sat down and discussed all the things that we could have all done better. And we've now rectified them up until this point. We've still got to rectify them for another five weeks. And then, uh, we will get a KO victory, I'm confident of it, on September 23rd. I'm getting the era that uh, sort of, uh, all right even, that Joe's sort of a bit of a mentality monster more so than ever for this fight camp. Would that be correct? Honestly, living with that guy, living with, the, he's like a scary monster right now, right? Like, he is in, he's in incredible form. He wants this win so bad. And Joe always performs at his best as an underdog. I mean, people stack the cards against him, expect an unbelievable performance on September 23rd and expect a devastating KO as well. The way that he's training in the form, form that he's in, I find it almost impossible to some extent how he doesn't get the KO victory. Obviously, we're in there with an incredible uh, opponent and an elite world level fighter in Zilai Zhang, who, again, like I said, people wrote off, he should be undefeated, he should be IBF mandatory. Um, and he wasn't, unfortunately, because uh, he got didn't get a fair decision, in my opinion, in uh, Saudi Arabia. <coughs> so, yeah. But um, it's going to be a very tough fight still, even as good as I know Joe will be. Um, but I still believe Joe will get a KO in good fashion. Shane, let's pick up on what you said about him, sort of, and the mentality that he shared. Now, you'll probably be able to reiterate this, but we've spent both time, you would have more than me, but uh, with Joe in and around camp, and especially out of camp, I look back at that amazing uh, night that we had around the time of the Fury Chisora fight, but we know how relaxed Joe is, and Joe likes to have fun, doesn't like to take life too seriously. I think that would probably be reiterated in his training camps as well, not that he's not working hard, but just having more fun with things. There's a different switch this time, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, a completely different switch. I mean, Joe... He's training and living like an animal, man. He's like, eat, sleep, train, repeat. Um, he's focused on nothing else in his life. He doesn't care about anything else in his life. All it is, is beating Zilai Zhang. I think he'll probably maybe admit himself, I think I've seen him say in some interviews actually, that he maybe overlooked Zhang a little bit. And maybe the Parker fight and, and whatnot got to be, maybe got to his head a little bit. But now he completely respects Zhang. How could he not completely respect Zhang after Zhang's last performance? And... Uh, all systems go for Joe's career at elite world level against Zhang. 
Is he fighting for his career on September the 23rd, Shay? I wouldn't say he's fighting for his career because Derek Chisora has lost 13, 14 times or whatever it is and he still earns good money and fights at, a, fights at a level and fought for a world title when he's fight before this one. But um, I think at elite world level, because no one really wants to fight him anyway, it's going to be very hard to get Joe to elite world level again. Not impossible, but it'd be very hard, um, especially at 37 years of age. But, um, but in, a, in a way, it's because Joe only wants to be a world heavyweight champion. He isn't interested in fighting Gerald Washington or fighting... Um, I can't remember, I'm trying to think of other recent fights he's had, or fighting Kubrat Pulev and, and things like that. Joe's only wants to be in the biggest and best fights for all the marbles, so. OK, let me talk about Sol this weekend. Uh, I believe he's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder. He was quite offended that the board didn't put him forward for that British title. It was first Fraser Clark, then Fraser turned it down, and then it was David Adelaide, and I believe something's being worked out there. But he felt that it was his right, probably, to get that British shot. He's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder. He wants to go in, good, put in a good performance Saturday. Uh, big statement last time out in Newcastle, and then progress forward and finally knock on those doors and get maybe the shots that he deserves. He's probably a bit frustrated that people back in his corner maybe haven't backed him as much as, they, as he probably would have hoped or thought. Probably a bit frustrating for him. It's difficult when the other uh, heavyweight that Matchroom have, obviously other than Johnny, at, around that level, um, obviously Fabio is kind of holding a lot of the marbles for them in the sense he had the British title. They were looking for the biggest and best fights for Fabio. Financially, is Seoul the or was Seoul the best fight for Fabio? No, maybe not. And was it probably the hardest one? Yeah, I would say it probably it definitely is. I mean, he's definitely a harder fight than David Adelaide. I think he's definitely a f harder fight than Fraser Clark. And he probably didn't produce the money um, that either of those two guys did, does or, or did. Obviously, he's a bit of a different character, Soul. He, he maybe isn't the most outspoken and loud person, but he's coming off a very good KO win against Robert Ismay in his backyard in two rounds um, and he's, he's going to have another good win on Saturday night even though it's a tough test because it's a southpaw that's, that's a decent southpaw as well um, on two weeks notice and Thompson's had a full camp because they were training for another fight um, so it's not going to be that's not going to be easy in itself and he's only sparred a southpaw twice so um, gonna have, we're going to have to he's going to have some tricky moments in that fight I expect but, um, but yeah I can see why he's frustrated but Sol just needs to stay focused keep winning in the way he does and the big opportunities will come. Man, like showing a couple more in the world of boxing as a whole, what do you make of this Alicia Baumgartner stuff? Uh, do you know what? It's just a fucking... It's just, you know, I wake up and I see it and it just... It doesn't even make me feel a certain way anymore. Before when I used to see stuff like that, I was like, almost sick to my stomach and I, I would uh, think about, like, what we, what's going to happen from here, what they're going to do and whatnot. And now I just read it, I'm like, oh, it's another one. Oh, it's another one, you know. Um, I mean, was it a Vardas test? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I was going to same process and same lab as Vardas apparently. Oh, okay, right. Well, cause I was going to give props to Vardas. I mean, they seem to be the only ones that are capturing people these days. But um, but uh, I can't have a full-on opinion. I don't know Alicia Bumgarner personally, but at the end of the day, she's failed a test. I don't know why they give it these mad names, adverse analytical finding like. You failed a drugs test, that's all you did. Like, not adverse analytical finding. Why has it got this new name all of a sudden? But, um, but uh, it just makes it sound a lot better, doesn't it? Because even when I read that, it sounds nowhere near. If it said failed drugs test, everyone would be like, wow, adverse analytical finding. But um, at the end of the day, she's failed a drugs test, hasn't she? And that's not me saying that she's an out and out treat, because that's not what that means. It means that she's failed a test on this time. And uh, I believe it was way after her fight, wasn't it? No, it was three days before. It was 12th of August, no? No, that's when they got the results. Oh. Well, there needs to be a question asked there. Why, If they're getting tested, then why, why is it coming out weeks, weeks afterwards? They must have known before she thought that there was an adverse analytical finding. They actually didn't. So didn't. it took seven days to get to the lab and 30 days to get the uh, results. Maybe, there, hopefully, there can be a, maybe a process where that's quicker because if that person did get hurt in the ring, which, thank God, she didn't, would there be some kind of legal or case or some kind of, I don't know, even like a criminal case behind that? I'm not, I'm not sure, but um, it's not good for the sport. Regardless, even if you're failing out of camp and whatnot, it's not good for the sport. It's, um, it puts bad light on the sport again. And we've had a positive few weeks, man. We had a great fight in Newey Fulton, an unbelievable performance from Terence Crawford against uh, 
Spence, we've had a big fight night there with AJ, Hellenius. I mean, the sport were doing good things to put the sport back in good light and then boom, what comes again, another failed drug set. One thing I will say though, people need to stop giving stick to matchroom yeah, and stuff all the time. I, 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 like, because they're fighting, because they're failing tests on, and they're fighting on matchroom shows, that isn't a bad thing on matchroom. I mean, matchroom are putting the money up and paying for the, um, the extra drug testing. And if you're gonna cane people for paying for that, then what they're gonna end up doing is, is not paying for it. And then people who are juicing are gonna be allowed to fight still. So I don't understand the stick for matchroom. It's not matchroom's fault. It's the fighter's responsibility, what's going in their body. And I'm not saying that to be a fanboy of anyone. I'm just being real, man. Like you can't discredit a company that are putting extra money out of their own pocket to test. Well, because then what's gonna happen is they're not gonna do that. And then, People who are failing drug test or should be failing drug test are going to be fine, aren't they? Shane, always a pleasure, my friend. We look forward to Saturday night. We'll probably catch up another time this week. But um, in terms of as, as well as you can be, given the nine million monsters and the jet lag, firing on all cylinders. Wait, what's that? You are firing on all cylinders, given the uh, jet yeah, lag and all the monsters. Yeah, firing on all cylinders, excited for another Matchroom W. No, not Matchroom, SJAM W. That's company, kind of man. Well, technically, it would be another Matchroom W because Johnny Fisher is a Matchroom. He fought last week, so technically, it is another Matchroom X SJAM um, W. But uh, yeah, I did slip up there. But yeah, but it is still technically true. So. He saved it. Shane Watson, thank you very much for speaking to us at Boxes.